this. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay. Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to vlog two, four, nine. Mm. Excellence with an agenda. Now, this is our New Year's vlog, and for people that have come in late, our New Year's vlog involves me talking with somebody truly fabulous to inspire you to think about the new year and think about how you can be better, do better, and become a citizen researcher that might just change the world. And so today, here's one I prepared earlier. Even with COVID, I did want to this year particularly bring someone who is truly spectacular and bring them to you and to your attention and to your vista. Dr. Daryl Selwood completed his PhD thesis titled Lived Experience of People with Complex Communication Needs, Romantic and Sexual Relationships. Yeah. And he won the Vice Chancellor's Award for Doctoral Thesis Excellence, one of the very, very few people that have, because this thesis was so profound and so extraordinary. So this PhD was based on Daryl's incredible academic life before the doctorate, a Bachelor of Com uh, Computer and Information Sciences, I think, a Bachelor of Arts with First Class Honours, and he currently lectures on disability and community inclusion. He is also currently a research fellow on a series of COVID related research topics. He also runs his regular and incredibly popular blog. Thanks for that, Daryl. DarylSelwood.com. And he's also an entrepreneur. He runs a series of workshops and is also an in-demand keynote speaker. So for this New Year vlog, Excellence with an Agenda, I bring to you a mate of mine, a friend of mine. Uh, I promised him we'd do a vlog. And as Daryl reminded me before we started recording, it has taken me a year, but women take a bit longer, Daryl, you're used to that. And so let's now talk about the remarkable scholar, the remarkable researcher, the remarkable man, Daryl. So Daryl, hi. And it is, oh, um, and oh. can, I, can I ask you the first question I always ask people? So your thesis was so great, Daryl, that it was given the Vice Chancellor's Award for Thesis Excellence. Could you tell us, Daryl, about that thesis? My exploratory research contributes a unique insight into the romantic and sexual lives of people with complex communication needs. It focuses on the experiences of people with complex communication needs in developing romantic and sexual relationships and aims to provide insights into their lives. Absolutely. The way I describe my research, when I'm out of pubs, I was basically looking at how people like me get lucky. <laughs> or not. Can I say that here, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, you can. It's making my eyes water a bit, Daryl, but that, that's fantastic. So I didn't know we'd be using the phrase getting lucky so early in the morning, but I feel so much better that we, we both said that, Daryl. Um, but what a great thesis, too. What a profound thesis and a great methodology. Have I just introduced Ferg, my support worker? Okay. Okay, he will help revoice what I say in case you're wondering who he is. Well, no, look, again, as I said, Ferg's a legend, and it's great to have two incredibly handsome men on my screen at the end of this COVID year, so we're thrilled to have you both here. But, Daryl, that was a great topic, a, a great methodology, a great epistemological transformation, and a great PhD topic, Daryl. But I was going to ask you about challenges. So every thesis presents challenges, Daryl, and... What was the challenge that you confronted in your research and, and how did you overcome it? Well, 
Apart from the topic being provocative and groundbreaking, there were some key methodological features which make my thesis stand out. Before I go ahead, let me explain some terminology. The term complex communication needs is a fairly broad term in the disability field referring to people with communication disabilities. In my research, I use the term more specifically to refer to people with communication and physical disabilities who use AAC. AAC is an acronym for augmentative and alternative communication and includes a range of communication strategies. These can range from basic alphabet boards that people can use to spell out words up to devices. Like this baby. Naturally, it is difficult to be heard if you have complex communication needs. Researchers often do not have the extra time to allow these people to be meaningfully involved in research. My research helps inform the conversation around methodology and methods for inclusion. Even something as seemingly simple as obtaining consent from the participants requires additional thinking and planning because it is not nearly as straightforward asking them to sign a form. Also, the transcription of the interviews raised additional considerations. I couldn't just send them to a transcription service because of the complex interactions between me as the interviewer, my communication assistant, the participant Adolf and the participant's communication assistant. Another important element of any thesis is the theoretical framework which provides a structure to understand and discuss your results. For my thesis, I developed a theoretical framework that brings together the concept of ableism, critical hermeneutics, feminist standpoint theory, and the international classification of functioning, disability and health model. Because I'm a member of the cohort being studied, I employed feminist standpoint theory to recognize my position as an inside knower with situated knowledge which enabled me to access knowledge that may not be available to an outsider researcher. As a consequence, I chose to write some chapters of my thesis in first person. The thing I'm most proud of, and I think this is the distinguishing contribution I have made to research evidence, is the perspective derived from the voices of those who are not often heard concerning a very personal and taboo topic. It begins a much needed conversation within the field of AAC and the broader disability field. I believe I have demonstrated that research can be inclusive and that there is an appetite within the community to continue to explore this vital conversation. My research will influence future research and practice within the disability field, especially in the AAC and assistive technology fields. I look forward to seeing new technology solutions which may emerge as a result. Um, did you just want to roll on to the challenges? I, I think that's fantastic. I'm very happy, Daryl, for you to keep going, mate. We had our next question I was going to ask you about the transition out of a PhD. But did you oh, want to talk through yeah. challenges? We're, we're actually one Darryl? question. We're, we're a question out of order at the moment, sorry. Um, uh, the, they were just going to respond to your question about challenges. Oh, that's that. that's great, Ferg. Thanks, mate. So the challenges. I mean, can I just say? So how remarkable, Ferg? How remarkable, Daryl, that you've talked about the innovations. You've talked about the epistemological transformations. The theoretical engagement there, Daryl, was profound. Obviously, I've read the thesis and it was incredible. But that view that you've just given us there has changed how I've thought about your thesis. So I'm very happy now because I mean that sounded amazing. So what challenges now? Uh, are, are concerning you or looking back on it now what were the, what were the really uh, your problematic areas Daryl were they methodological talk to me about it yeah. 
One of the most obvious challenges was communication as all the participants had communication disabilities similar to mine. Many of them had a communication assistant such as my lovely assistant sitting next to me now. Although I endeavoured to ensure that the main interaction was always between me and the participant, the interviews often involved four-way interactions to clarify what both the participant and I had said. Can you imagine sending a recording of such an interview to a transcription service? <laughs> <laughs> My supervisor told me I should transcribe the interviews verbatim. My personal assistants helped me with the transcription. They typed what they could understand, but I was always next to them to help when communication was unclear. Because of my knowledge and personal experience, I could mostly grasp what people were saying. In most other interviews, where communication is not such a challenge, a participant will make a point in a couple of sentences. This is easy to transcribe, analyze and code. In the interviews I carried out, often when a participant was trying to make an important point, because of communication difficulties and the toing and froing between the participant, me and the communication assistants, the idea ended up being spread over one or two pages in the transcript and could easily have been missed. Absolutely. The first two interviews were transcribed verbatim, with one taking about 30 hours to complete. Wow. Much time was spent transcribing each utterance, including communication breakdowns. A communication breakdown occurs when a communication, typically verbal, is misunderstood. Repairing a communication breakdown means correcting the misunderstanding, which can require multiple attempts from a person with complex communication needs. After transcribing the first two interviews, I convinced my supervisors that, while I would document the breakdowns, I would not transcribe them in detail. Including every utterance would introduce unnecessary and irrelevant data, distracting from the intended meaning. It was important to keep in mind that the research was not about communication breakdowns, but about the lived experiences of participants. I'm currently in my first postdoctoral mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you said that each of the other interviews still took at least twelve hours each. Wow! Wow! That's mm -hmm. that's amazing, Daryl. Yeah, three hours of interview. Mm -hmm. They do say allow one to four. <laughs> so I did all right. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. But, but Daryl, the level of methodological innovation there, I mean, as I've said to you since I've met you, which is a long time now, there's so many papers to write about the methodological innovations. We can learn in terms of methodology from what you've done here. It's just yeah. it, your thesis and you as a researcher, you're just a gift that keeps on giving and there's a lot of meta work to be done now. And Daryl, that really leads me to the next question because you're one of the few, I would argue, PhD students that very soon after your PhD, you've been able to hit the ground running and you've been able to roll through all the changes and create a post-thesis career. So you've managed that transition out of a PhD incredibly well, Daryl. Can you tell us about some of the, the current projects and the current jobs, mate? I'm currently in my first postdoctoral position, working as a research fellow with Professor R.C. Uli at Flinders University on a project involving software called Abracadabra. Yes, there is a touch of Harry Potter in that it involves education for people with diverse abilities. Nice. Uh, 
I love that term, diversibility. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It is a COVID-related project investigating online literacy instruction for children with development disabilities. I have been engaged to analyse data from interviews with the parents of the children involved in an eight-week therapy program which is being delivered online for the first time. I am also doing some work with a PhD student who is doing a systematic review around children with cerebral palsy and literacy, which I am also excited about. In 2021, I will be taking up a scholarly fellow position in the Disability and Community Inclusion Unit. I will be contributing to teaching and learning across the suite of disability and community inclusion topics in the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. The role includes advising on the development and delivery of teaching materials and other innovative teaching and learning strategies. I am excited to be involved with the higher education organisation that is so consciously student-centred. Whenever I undertake teaching tasks such as lecturing or workshops, my ultimate aim is for each student to gain a deeper understanding of topics being explored. Absolutely fantastic, Daryl. As a oh. person with disability, I have first-hand experience of Flinders University's commitment to embracing diversity. I have greatly valued this and am determined to build on this foundation and help others learn and flourish in the academic environment. That's absolutely fantastic, Gerald. Does that mean, therefore, that next year I might be training you as a PhD supervisor? Mm. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, or you Maybe. Maybe, or you might be trading me. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, Daryl, that's just fantastic news. In tough times, you, you're a winner, mate. You are a winner. And, and I wanted to raise, if I can, Daryl, the entrepreneurial component of this. You, you are very focused on delivering workshops, delivering lectures. Now, you're a great example to so many of our students. How have you developed this entrepreneurial arm to the research work that you do? As a teenager and young adult, I was often involved in providing disability awareness workshops and talks to community groups and university students. Since 1998, I have been lecturing in a variety of subject areas at Flinders University and Uni South Australia, including occupational therapy, speech pathology, rehabilitation engineering and disability studies. Having a PhD gives you a bit more clout and you can charge a bit more. <laughs> I have presented numerous conference papers and keynote addresses at both Australian and international conferences. Also, on the side, although not research related, but very important for supporting the higher education sector, I have started a business selling excellent quality, ethnically sourced coffee. Whoops. No more accidental self promotion of the Dr. Des brand. I'll leave that up to you, Tara. Look, look I, I knew you might go there. So, Dr. Daz, those of you, I mean, talk about entrepreneurship. So, Daryl, surprisingly, or perhaps not, has, has got a whole yeah. other arm to, to mm -hmm. business projects. That is Dr. Daz. So if you look at Dr. Daz and, and selling coffee. Uh, and I've heard, Daryl, it's absolutely outstanding coffee. How am I going selling the brand, mate? We winning? We're doing, doing yeah. all right? Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Right. So, yeah. so, uh, uh, excellent. excellent. So I might get a freebie after yeah. this promotion. Is that what you're yeah. telling me, Daryl? <laughs> That's likely. very likely. Very likely. Yeah. But, but Daryl, fantastic. What I love about the story that you've just given there, which is so inspirational for our students, is that you were involved in lectures and workshops and outward work through the bulk of your adult life. And you've just intensified that work uh, through the PhD. And as you've said, of course, you're now paid a lot more, which is, which is outstanding.
Yeah, yeah, and you're not. Um, can I ask you now, Daryl, as we're moving towards the end of this blog, and you're, you're an amazing mate of mine, and I, I can't imagine uh, my life in Australia having not met you, Daryl. But the question I have for you now is about when you look back on the PhD, and of course, hundreds of thousands of people will, will look at this vlog and, and learn from you. But mm -hmm. is there something mm. that you would have done differently? Looking back on it now and all the successes, is there something you would have done differently in the doctoral yeah. space, mate? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Drink more of the stuff. <laughs> 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 I would have structured the interviews differently. The three hour time limit for each interview was only enough to scratch the surface. In retrospect, it would have been preferable to have structured multiple three hour sessions over a six month period. Mm -hmm. Subsequent interviews could have been used to clarify understanding and delve more deeply into the experiences shared by participants. Mm -hmm. However, obviously, gaining a fuller understanding will take more time and effort. If I had my time again, I would have chosen the same supervisors I ended up with, but I would have found them much quicker. <laughs> it took me a while to find the right matches. The person who ended being my primary supervisor had been one of my honours supervisors. She started as an associate supervisor for my PhD, but it soon became clear to me that she was the right person to be primary supervisor. She gave me the freedom to take control and really explore the area I was interested in, in a way that suited me, but regularly challenged my ideas and encouraged me to think academically. I had heard that you start your PhD liking your supervisor and end up hating them. But this definitely was not the case for me. We have built up a strong relationship which we both value. One of the biggest things I would do differently is realize earlier in my candidacy that this was my project. When you were doing the PhD, you were the one in the driver's seat and the supervisors are just your mates in the car, helping you work out when to change gears and giving you advice on which way to steer and probably hoping you don't crash the car too badly. <laughs> That's brilliant. Another tip I have, but don't tell her this though. As you know, doing a PhD you are always time poor. You could be writing Firstly, watch a lot of Tara's wonderful weekly vlogs. They were of great assistance to me, especially the ones on the writing required in the PhD. They have been encouraging on those tough, lonely nights attempting to work through a writer's block. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And Daryl, what I love about that is you've raised all those crucial areas. So supervision is crucial, absolutely crucial. And the idea that you were able to stabilise that group for yourself and it worked incredibly well and the relationship is sustained. That's powerful advice. Also, mate, I'm thrilled by that advice you offer about interviews because, you know, my, my background was originally in history and I did a lot of work on oral history. So how we handle the sociological interview and its relationship to the much longer oral history interviews. I think, again, there's some great methodological work for you to help us with, to think about how we manage interviews moving between the humanities and the social sciences, particularly in allied health areas, Daryl. So I think there's some great work there. And I would love, I would love to read a piece on you and interviewing and how we can shape and, and change how we think about uh, interviews, particularly in the qualitative space. That's fantastic, mate. Fantastic. Um, look, and last question, Daryl, and Ferg been a legend, but last question, Daryl. This is the New Year's blog. These are always very, very special moments of the year, and I think COVID 2020 makes this even more meaningful. And the idea we've got somebody as uh, amazing as you, as wonderful as you, as legendary as you, just makes me happy at the end of this tough year. But 
what advice or inspiration would you offer to the PhD students around the world that may be doing it a bit tough post-2020? What would you say to them, Daryl? Firstly, watch a lot of Tara's wonderful weekly vlogs. They were a great <laughs> assistance to me, especially the ones on the writing required in the PhD. They have been encouraging on those tough, lonely nights attempting to work through a writer's block. Another tip I have, but don't tell her this though. As you know, doing a PhD you are always time poor. You could be writing 200 words in the time that you watch the vlog. However, if you turn up the video speed to 1.25 or even <laughs> 1.5 times, you will still get the valuable information she imparts, and she sounds almost normal. <laughs> Most importantly, though, you need to believe in your PhD research. Ensure that it has a higher purpose than achieving your qualification. While keeping your ultimate goal of graduating in mind, set yourself smaller daily and weekly goals that you can work toward. Achieving these small goals will give you the boost you need to continue the hard slog of finishing your PhD. Doing a PhD is a massive undertaking and a lot of it is just downright hard work. I think there are two things to remember. It's important to seek moments of enjoyment within the work itself. It's also crucial to ensure that you maintain important friendships with people who will encourage you through this amazing time of your life. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. If, if I was offering advice, I'd be, I wouldn't have been as loquacious as you were there. It's about maintaining the friendships, having the downtime, having the leisure, enjoying yourself. But also, Daryl, how moving that you made the point that you've got to find, and I'll use the word intrinsic, you've got to find the intrinsic meaning in the research beyond the qualification itself. The qualification is important, but it's the meaningfulness mm. in it as you move forward. Mm. That's the deal. Mm. Wow. Uh, Daryl, you remain a mate, but you remain probably one of the greatest ambassadors for Flinders University than we could ever hope for, that we could ever wish for. Uh, you are the best of what we have done in the PhD program. I'm just clicking into my uh, fifth year. I'm about to move into my fifth year as Dean. And mm -hmm. I feel like you've been rolling alongside of me through those mm -hmm. five years and you've provided great meaning and heart and robustness uh, in tough times, mate. And I'm so thrilled that we've shared this New Year's vlog together. I always promised you we would, and we have. So, Daryl, I'll, I'll, I'll do the conclusion on behalf of us both. So on behalf of Daryl, on behalf of the legendary Ferg, and on behalf of the former Dean of Daryl, that's how I think I'm going to pronounce Tara Brabazon, comma, former Dean of Daryl. Uh, we wish you a wonderful 2020, mm. and we all wish you love, light, and peace. And I've done that intentionally, very slowly, Daryl. So when people do follow your advice and go to speed time and a half, uh, they'll at least get our message. So thank you, colleagues. Uh, thanks, Ferg. Thanks, Daryl. Happy New Year. May it be a better year. <laughs> May it be a better year. Thank you both. Have a lovely day. See you later. <laughs> Daryl, you happy? <laughs> you were brilliant. You happy?